Today I'm going to talk about straw dogs from 1971. Well first subscribe to my channel, I've got some brilliant reviews I'm coming. Here. This is David Sumner. All his life he's been running away, turning his back on trouble, involvement and confrontation. Until now. There are five men out there. I know that. Straw Dogs came out in 1971 and it's a psychological thriller and it's also a part of the revenge subgenre. It was directed by Sam Peckinpah and the screenplay was also wrote by Sam Peckinpah and David Goodman. The film also had a remake in 2011. It's based on a novel in 1969, The Sage of Trenches Farm by Gordon M. Williams. The film has a strange title, Straw Dogs, and this title derives from the ancient Chinese ceremony. It means being of ceremonial worth, but afterwards discarded with indifference. The film runs 117 minutes, but there's also an edited cut that runs 113 minutes. So that's four minutes cut. The film costs 2.2 million. The film was controversial at the time for its violence and rape scene. Because in the film, Susan George plays a character who gets raped. There's scenes where it seems as though she's enjoying it. The music was done by Jerry Fielden and it got an Academy Award nomination for Best Music. However, it didn't win. It was filmed in Cornwall, England. This is now regarded as one of Sam Peckinpah's greatest films. This and The Wild Bunch. The film stars Dustin Hoffman as David Summer, Susan George as Amy Summer, Peter Vaughan as Tom Hedden, J.P. McKenna as Major John Scott and David Warner as Henry. However, David Warner is uncredited. This was because he broke his foot during shooting and because of insurance purposes, he wasn't allowed to have a credit on the film. So the plot of the film is about this couple, played by Dustin Hoffman and Susan George. They move from the city where they lived into this small rural village. They encounter the villagers and it turns out that they're all nutters. They're skitting them and calling them names. And eventually, they actually attack them in their own home. So it's sort of like a home invasion sort of movie. Hey, they're just like them buggers in that bloody village that you used to bloody live in, Phil. Bloody shit houses. Yeah, they didn't have guns there, they were bones. At least I don't think they had guns. But what makes this film great is Dustin Hoffman's character called David. And at first, the character's sort of like a shy, timid kind of character. He's, he's a mathematician, but he gets pushed to such an extreme that he breaks. Eventually, he um, says to hell with it protects his home against these uh, there's five villagers with guns there's only him but but he actually stands up to his stands up for himself and it attacks them and he actually defeats them there's a character called Henry played by David Warner who's like a little bit slow and backward and he accidentally kills this girl who's flirting with them and the, that's why the, the villagers are uh, wanting him the noise inside David's house David knows if, if they let him go they would kill him he's doing like the right thing so it's a really like controversial film it does really controversial issues and I think it's probably Sam Peckinpah's best film directed a lot of good films like The Wild Bunch he gets a nickname Bloody Sam because his films are always usually violent and this film's no exception there's lots of violence especially in the final act but Dustin Hoffman's great in this film it's probably his best performance he's been in a lot of good films like The Graduate, Marathon Man he's done lots of good f stuff but I'd class this as his best film and I couldn't think of anyone better to play the part of David so he's getting picked on throughout the film it's a bit similar to The Wicker Man where everyone's against this one person Partly to blame his wife, played by Susan George. Like, she's walking around with no bra, so her nipples are sticking out a mile long. <laughs> and she, she's, like, deliberately flirting with, with some of the villagers that she used to know, because she used to live there years ago. Hey, that bloody Susan George flashing the bloody tits about. It's no wonder she got bloody attacked by them village nutters. So she's, like, a bit of a naive character. 
she doesn't realise that she's having this effect on people. But really turns like a turning point in the films when the the villagers kill a cat. They're hanging up in the wardrobe. What's the matter? I love the scene when the character Redeavit tells the workmen who were mending his house that they're sacked because he's that full of hell with them killing the cat. But they really are a bunch of skitty twats in this film. It's terrible. And also the rape scene's very controversial because of Susan George. Not only is it like violent where she gets slapped a lot but also starts to enjoy it. So uh, very controversial. One of the characters he accidentally blows his foot apart. A man f falls into this light like, man trap. There's lots of pretty pretty gruesome stuff in this film. But the director, he's not frightened to do controversial things in his films and this film for me is very personal. It shows how villagers can pick on individuals for no real reason. Like they'll pick on them. They don't have, you don't have to be gay or black to get disliked. If villagers don't like you they'll pick on you. Some villagers, they're not all the same, but there are some areas in England where if you stand out you will get harassed and picked on and it happened to me like I used to live in a village and the, the, they were awful thank god I moved out hey Phil makes my bloody blood boil them daft buggers in this film bloody skitty twats how can your blood boil bones you don't have any blood so why do villagers pick on individuals I think it's because like small villages there's not many people and they kind of like know each other's business that's why they'll focus on some members of the village it's a bit like the bloody prisoner <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't happen in cities because there's more people in cities but in small villages there's a less number of people and that's how some people can get picked on i think i only had one friend in the village that i lived and it turns out he was a twat at the end. Anyway, back to the review. I love the change in Dustin Hoffman towards the end of this film. Completely different. He's so brave, battling against five people outside his home. Okay, you've had your fun. I'll give you one more chance. And if you don't clear out now, there'll be real trouble. I mean it. And I love the final line where he's, he's in his car him and Henry, he drives him away from his house. Henry says, I don't know the way home. David says, I don't too. That means he doesn't class it as his home, the, the, the village. Kind of read into that, that he, he's planning on possibly leaving his wife and moving back to the city. Terrific final line, that. Brilliant way to end, end the film. So overall, I thought this film was perfect. Brilliant uh, subject focusing on village life and what some villagers are like. And for me personally, I can really relate to the Dustin Hoffman character. I thought easily one of his best performances. So out of 10, I'm going to give this film top marks, 10 out of 10. That was outstanding. But the good thing for us to do, I think. Excellent film, Phil. Top marks. Bloody good job we moved to Durham. We're from that bloody village. Hey everybody, bye! See you next time, like, subscribe and share. Bye! Bye! I don't know my way home.